Good evening to Hayward and City Council of Hayward and Iowa is now in order on Wednesday, April 8th, 2015 at 532 p.m. President or Council other than Councilman Travis Olson. A uh, number of uh, changes tonight. Um, we're going to uh, give the Council a little bit of time uh, on Agenda 1A to read the minutes because they were not in the electronic packet. Uh, we're going to move uh, the hospital update uh, down to in front of uh, agenda item number eight. And when we get to the consent agenda, we will be asking to table that. Uh, congratulations to uh, Larry Bowder. Happy birthday. Uh, Thank the, you. Uh, Snicker bars are from Larry, and uh, we congratulate him on having a birthday today. If you're in attendance tonight and want to address the city council, your opportunity for that will be uh, agenda item number 1C at open business from the community. We'll ask you to come to the podium and state your name, and we will limit you to uh, comments of five minutes apiece. So as we start our city council meeting, uh, agenda item number 1A is the approval of the March 25th council meeting minutes. Uh, Gary had printed those out in paper. I'll give you an opportunity to read those just a moment. and. Uh, So moved. There's been a there's been a motion by Tim and a, and a second by Larry for the March 25th, 2015 council meeting minutes. Are there any questions or clarifications? Hearing none, all in favor of the approval of those council meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Those opposed. That passes four to zero. Next is the approval of the April 8th claims for payment. Uh, we'll start to my right with Monty for questions, please. Nope. Okay. Larry, do you have questions no, for I don't. payments? Okay. No. Tim, any questions? Paying questions on payments? None. Okay. Hearing no questions, I'd entertain a motion for approval of the April 8th claims. So moved. Moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Payne. <clears throat> Further discussion? All in favor of the claims for payment say aye. 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 Those opposed? That again passes four to zero. Next is open business from the community. Anyone wish to address the council at this point? Hearing none, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Uh, we'd like to do a proclamation for the week of the young child. Whereas We Care, Inc., and Kitty Land Preschool, Child Development Center, West Sioux Daycare, Kid, Kids of the Kingdom, and other local organizations, in conjunction with the National Association for the Education of Young Children, are celebrating the Week of the Young Child between April 12th and the 18th of 2015. Whereas these organizations are working to improve early learning opportunities, including early literacy programs, that can provide a foundation of learning for children in Haywarden, and whereas teachers and others who make a difference in the lives of young children in Haywarden deserve our thanks and recognition, and whereas public policies that support early learning for all young children are crucial to young children's futures, I record Porter, Mayor of Haywarden, to hereby proclaim April 12th to the 18th, 2015, the week of the young child in Haywarden, Iowa, and encourage all citizens to work to make a good investment in early childhood in Haywarden. We'll be attending the child fair on Monday evening at the community center and again presenting this to uh, those folks. We thank everyone that works with young children for their care and concern. Also the Haywarden Community Foundation uh, for nonprofit organizations. Uh, the deadline for applications will be April the 15th. So if there are nonprofit organizations within the city of Hayward and that wish to make application to the Hayward Community Foundation, they need to do that in the next week. Uh, you can call myself or the city offices with questions. At this point, are there any council comments? Hearing none, we'll move to staff reports. We'll start with Tom Kane, please, Department of Public Works. A couple Works. items. Uh, Hazardous Household Waste Day is April 10th, this Friday, from 1 to 4, and it will be at the street department where we normally have it. If for any reason you cannot get there on that date or that time, please give us a call, and we'll try to get your stuff down there for you. So, 
Citywide cleanup once again is May 1, 2, and 3. Um, the fence is installed down at the site and we will be um, opening the gates down there from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. and no items will be allowed to be removed from the area. Uh, we'll have somebody on site during that weekend and there will be a camera installed. And uh, once again, if you have some items you cannot get down there, please give us a call and we'll stop at your place and try to help you accommodate getting them down there. We had two electric outages in the last week, uh, April 1st and uh, at about 10.30 a.m. and on Easter Sunday, about 9 a.m. and they were both caused by squirrels and those squirrels will not do that again. <laughs> uh, our wells, they are, our, our water level is dropping. It's about three and a half to four feet above the intake. So uh, at some point in the near future, if that doesn't change, we might have to address some water rationing again. That's all I have. I think we were in that same shape last year about this time too, so. Okay, thanks, Tom. Uh, Gary Tucker, city administrator, please. I just have one item. Um, we're still in need of about uh, three or possibly four lifeguards for the swimming pool this summer, and uh, we encourage uh, individuals looking for uh, some summer employment to um, go to the city webpage or stop in uh, to city offices and take out an application. Um, we we need to have a, a certain number of lifeguards in order for the pool to open. So. I can't remember what well, what date do we shoot to get that open by? Usually about the first week of June, typically. All right. Jim Pickner, anything from? City no, Attorney? nothing to report. Okay, thanks, Mike DeBrine, Anything? Nothing as well. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff before we move? Okay. We'll move on to other agenda items. We're going to move to agenda item number four. This would be the approval of the fiscal sponsorship for the Hayward Community Supper grant request. Again, the city of Hayward would just be the fiscal sponsor and just kind of a pass through if they receive funding from any uh, grants that they are requesting. Uh, we do this uh, pretty much every year. We get asked to be a fiscal sponsor for these grant <coughs> requests. And uh, uh, the reason for that is if they're not a 501c3, they're not eligible for the foundation grants. Uh, even though they're a nonprofit, they have to be uh, specifically be a 501c3 in order to do that or to be eligible. If they are not, then they re it requires them to have a fiscal agent such as the city or, or another uh, nonprofit entity that is a 501c3. Um, and so we've, uh, uh, it take, does take council action to, uh, to approve the fiscal agent um, sponsorship, so. Is there a motion to be a fiscal sponsor for the Hayward and Community Supper? So moved. Moved by Tim. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Larry. Further questions? All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed? That passes four to zero. Agenda item number five would be the, uh, the same thing, the city being a fiscal sponsor for the Sons of the American Legion grant request. So moved. Moved by Monty. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Payne. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? That also passes four to zero. Lastly, in that same regard, uh, agenda item number six, being a fiscal sponsorship for the Hayward and Senior Center. A motion for that. Moved by Tim. Is there a second? Sure. Seconded by Monty. All in favor of uh, being a sponsor for the Hayward and Senior Center, say aye. 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 Those opposed? That again passes four to zero. Agenda item number seven. This would be a resolution 2015-10, approving a bond purchase agreement for the sale of the electric revenue improvement bonds series 2015. With us tonight from D.A. Davidson is Michael Maloney. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Michael Maloney from D.A. Davidson. 
Uh, we served as underwriter on the Series 2015 electric bonds that we priced and finalized pricing on today. Uh, the final numbers for those bonds are attached. The purpose of this bond issue was the phase two of the undergrounding for the electric utility. Uh, there is an outstanding Series 2011 issue. We did look at the potential to refinance that. At this time, all rates are still very low. The time until the call on that 2011 issue is actually 2018. It did not make economic sense at this time, so you will have two electric issues currently outstanding, the 2011s and the 2015s. So when you look at the debt here, we've not just included this issue, but also the structure for the existing 2011 issue and structure them so that your payments on an ongoing basis will be level. Uh, in fact, those annual payments will be about 430000 That's the same as what they are this fiscal year for the city's electric utility. So really kind of keeping things uh, from an impact standpoint relatively neutral. Uh, the total debt service over 20 years is right in line with what we reviewed with Gary a couple of weeks ago in advance of pricing this bond issue. Uh, the true interest cost, which is really the best way to measure the all-in interest rate on a municipal bond issue, unlike your traditional home mortgage rather than a single rate for the full term of that loan, there are in typically individual rates in each year. So we look at this true interest cost. For this 20-year electric financing, the true interest cost is a 3.46%, and that's reflected on page two of the handout that was provided today. Uh, if you go back to the front page, that first page, in the second table of numbers or under uses is the undergrounding phase two project fund. This bond issue will provide 2.8 million of proceeds available for this project. I know bids have come in rather favorably, so this is going to provide plenty of proceeds for you to carry out the project as currently intended. Um, just some additional administrative steps beyond today. Today is to lock in the interest rates that are shown on page three of the attached document for you. These rates would then be formally approved in your loan documents provided by <coughs> bond attorneys, Dorsey and Whitney, and those would be up for your review and approval at your next council meeting on April 22nd. After that, the last step would be closing for the issue on May 5th, and at that point, the funds would be delivered to the city for you to be able to go and uh, pay for the undergrounding project phase two. <coughs> uh, just a couple other items, page four and five, lay out the annual debt service payments. Page four is simply this sim series 2015 issue. We also thought it was useful to show the aggregate debt payments, the 15 and the existing 2011, and that's shown on page five again the annual payments going forward right at that same level, 430000 as the electric fund will be paying on just the 11 alone in this fiscal year. Um, <coughs> I want to point out um, before council uh, chooses to take action on this that Gary and staff have been extremely responsive throughout this process, uh, working with Dorsey and Whitney, your bond council out of Des Moines. Uh, it's really gone very, very smoothly, and it really helps when the city is up to speed and, and gets back to us uh, whenever we're asking for extra little details. It makes a big difference when it comes time to price the bonds. So I just want to say thank you here publicly. Um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Council members, uh, any questions that you might have either at this time or in the future, you have my contact information listed there, but be more than happy to answer whatever you may have uh, at this point uh, prior to your uh, taking action on the bonds. Thank you. Questions from Council or any comments from Gary? We appreciate those comments in, our, in regards to our city staff. We know we've got some good folks here, so we yes. appreciate that. Um, seems like we've done a nice job at this point getting these, uh, these rates. And it's a very strong time to be in the market. You can never time things up that way. That's not how it works. But when, I, when you're able to borrow uh, for 20 years at under 3.5%, done pretty well um, and I, I think that doesn't matter just in 2015 but just in general that's a that's a really strong performance 
So this would be um, resolution 2015-11 to authorize the public hearing on the, excuse me, to authorize the approving of the bond purchase agreement for the sale of electric revenue improvement bonds series 2015. There's been a motion by Tim. Is there a second? Hell, let's spend 2.8 million. <laughs> Is that a second? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Further questions or clarifications? Hearing no questions, we'll call for a roll call vote, please, for resolution 2015-10. Bowder? Aye. Kurth? Aye. Allen? Aye. Harvey? On a four to zero roll call vote, resolution 2015-10 passes. As Michael said, in our next two uh, meetings, we'll continue with this process. So we need some time with him to uh, get things together before you leave. Yeah, I think we're, okay, we're in good shape. I think we're good. Awesome. I'll give you this. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, kind of a joint agenda items, the hospital project update by Jason Pullman and uh, going in then to agenda item number eight. Good evening. Are you going to be able to get those documents up, Gary? Not right now. Are I'm you? having trouble here. So, okay. so hopefully you have... <clears throat> some documents that are in front of you, and I know that uh, Gary will try to get those up as, as soon as possible. So I want to talk about the building project for the hospital. To kind of give you just a uh, 30,000 uh, view look, you know, February 5, we went out for bids, and we got quite a few bids in, but we were missing some, and, and we were kind of uh, seeing that the bidding uh, bidder's market was changing slightly, and so we uh, went out for rebid, and... Uh, was able to get uh, uh, most of the remainder of the bids uh, for the project, and um, and really realized that we were we were uh, the bids that were coming in that were just a little bit over and uh, more than we anticipated. And we reached out to Chris Coon, which works for Dorsey Whitney, and we reached out to other um, <clears throat> people that are doing hospital projects, and they said the environment's changing, um, bids are coming in a little over. And, uh, and so that's a pretty common phenomenon throughout the, the whole United States. Um, so uh, we, we met with Mitch uh, Saban and also Chris Kuhn. And she's, um, she's working through uh, the bond council for the city and, and the long-term debt. And um, uh, the, the, the information that I'm sharing with you, we've, we've also shared with Mitch from the USDA and, and uh, looked at our performance and our... Uh, debt service and, and really didn't have any, any challenges with any of that. And he said, you know what, if you, if, you know, we need to get this done and, and uh, uh, ultimately said, we're going to start working on those, on those contracts and bids, send them to us. So I know that they are actively working, looking through the bids and looking through the contracts because uh, they want to get this project going. And so, um, and so we'll go into the, the document that you see here to kind of give you a snapshot of where we're at. So <clears throat> the, really the, the main column that you really need to look at is the fifth column uh, on the revised budget. And you can see on the first one, the USDA direct loan is $8.83 million at 3.5% interest over 30 years. I think we're all comfortable with that. Uh, the bank qualified, which is our local banks here, they have uh, designated $2 million to the project. Uh, the hospital... Uh, was supposed to put in five hundred thousand dollars, and as I said before, as we we, we triggered on the long, on the short term uh, intermittent, intermittent financing, I said we don't want to pay interest, so we have decided uh, to uh, pay the architect fees throughout this whole project, uh, just because we don't want to borrow money to pay interest on it. I mean that makes sense to everybody, and so <clears throat> with the uh, budget being a little bit off. Um, the board has decided, you know, we've already paid these expenses. Uh, let's just put that in as equity for the project. So that brings our equity up to 1.127 in the project. We also had a very successful uh, fundraising event. And so cash in hand, this is cash that we have in the, in the hospital uh, from fundraising activities, is $1.164 million. 
that's what we can have and that's what we have in hand to spend. We also work with the Baird Company, which has helped us through the USDA application. They're, they have a lot of experience in that area and they helped us through the application. They looked at the remainder of the philanthropy or fundraising that we have and said, you know, realistically, with an interest rate of 4.16, and I know you're talking about less interest than that today, but with an interest rate of 4.16, we believe if you cut the re remainder of the philanthropy at 90%, we believe you can borrow against that and cover the interest at $750,000. So that's a, that's a shortfall that we have. And then as you can see down at the end of the column, we have about a $68,000 deficit for long-term financing. And so you can see that um, the ask or what we're, what we're presenting today is to set a public hearing to borrow an additional uh, potential additional $820,000 of debt capacity. Understanding we don't want to have more debt than we want. I mean, we, we don't want to pay interest just like anybody doesn't want to pay interest. So we need to have that $820,000 of debt capacity to satisfy the USDA so we can get started. You know, they said it was, it's great that you, you raised, you know, two and a half million dollars, but I'm not going to start this project on pledges, guys. And so you have to have the financial backing. And so we believe that the community is very, has had a strong presence with the two and a half million dollars. The Bayard Company has said, you know, realistically, $820,000 is something that can be done uh, with the philanthropy. And so <clears throat> um, that's one, one discussion piece that we'll, we'll tie up later at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> the next page, I just wanted to provide you a, an overview of where the hospital has been sitting for the last couple of years. I'll draw your attention to the operating income. As you can see over the course of the last, from 2008 to 2014, we've had a steady, uh, steady bottom line uh, and also uh, increase uh, in the net position. You can see that we've been, very, been doing very well over the course of many years. Some of the reasons why we've been doing very well is we've changed the way we do things. We don't leave dollars on the table. I think as, as a business owner, you can understand and working with the city, you can't leave dollars on the table. So we maximize everything that we do and try to get more money coming in the door. And as you can see, we've done that uh, for quite a few years. The next thing that uh, uh, somebody may ask is, well, Jason, you're going to ask us for another $820,000. Yes, 750000 of that is going to be backed by, by philanthropy. What happens if you don't get a dime of that philanthropy in? So we ran the, we ran the debt and, uh, to find out if we had the cash to support it without the philanthropy. Obviously, you can see that uh, <clears throat> uh, our debt service coverage is, is strong. And you can see the, the first uh, set of numbers, you can see the the debt service coverage with the $10.8 million. And then you can see that with the additional $820,000 uh, added on to end. And the footnotes there, common bond covenants to allow an additional indebtedness require project debt service coverage ratio of excess of 1.35. And so you look at that debt service coverage and that means ultimately that's a ratio of cash to its debt. Obviously we have enough debt service ratio to, to easily uh, handle this project. So then I wanted to, I, I was trying to think about, well, what would you want to know about, the, about our organization? So I tried to provide you with some general stats on what we've been looking at over the course of, uh, course of several years. And so you can see you know, from 2010, 11, 12, 13, and 14, you can see that uh, our, we have been increasing our volumes throughout, the, throughout those years. And what I did is I took all those years and I averaged them and then I compared them to 2010 and that's what the percentage is. So I took all those years, averaged them because there's fluctuations up and down and then I compared them to 2010. And so you can see admissions were up by 14%, swing beds were up by 24%, uh, emergency room patients were up by 13%, Observation beds. Now, observation beds are an interesting phenomenon. They are a patient that's in a bed, but they're not an admission. So they're there for a short period of time, but they're still taking up a bed. And, that, and so 
we had a 22% increase in observation bed, and then the hours are the hours that they're actually in the bed, and that's all we get to bill for. So you can see that <clears throat> each patient, on average, spends about 19 hours in, our, in a bed in our hospital per admission. 19, 20, 21, somewhere in that area. You can also then take a look at our, our, pay, our physical therapy volume, up 9%, uh, inpatient up 48% from 2010, and outpatient uh, uh, up also. Laboratory procedures, you can see a, a general increase, especially with the inpatient as we see increased uh, uh, days and increased swing bed activity. You also see increased uh, inpatient uh, volume also. And then I also thought that, you know, you'd like to see what our outpatient's doing, and you can definitely see that there's probably a 3% on average increase in our overall uh, uh, outpatients being treated. And that's for therapies and uh, IV therapies and those types of things that we do on a regular basis. Uh, in concluding, uh, uh, USDA is, is review, u reviewing the bids and, and the contracts. They started yesterday. Contractors have extended their bids for another 30 days. Uh, we need to, from the USDA's perspective, increase our debt capacity by another $820,000, $750,000 of that being backed by philanthropy with a junior loan on the revenue. The <clears throat> uh, extra $70,000 would be in addition to the long-term debt for the building project. The debt service ratio proves that we have the cash and the cash flow to handle the debt. And the ask is for us to go into public hearing for the extension of the debt capacity by $820,000 to get the building project off the floor and moving. Any questions? you have a contingency if we don't approve the increase? Are you figuring on just doing a smaller hospital or cut back on something, or do you have some way of doing that? Uh, good question, Tim. Thank you for the question. Um, we've looked at the overall <clears throat> square footage of the project, and unfortunately, when we you start uh, crimping square footage, you affect the Medicare square, uh, reimbursement rate for the organization. And by small, uh, making this, the, the footprint smaller, you actually cripple the cripple the building from producing revenue into the future. And we did a test on this, and I've been very familiar with square footage in my last job. We can move 1,000 square foot from non-revenue, non excuse me, non-revenue generating area to revenue generating, and we can flip the bottom line from a $70,000 loss to $150,000 gain. That's how much, that's how important the total square footage is. I've looked at the plan multiple times. It really produces the revenue that it's supposed to. And if you start messing with that, you start messing with the overall longevity of producing revenue for, with the building project. How about the, where you had this equipment that went from a million or 500,000 to a million 500,000? Mm -hmm. Could we go back to the 500,000? and just not, or maybe rent more things and not buy everything that you had on the second one? Yeah, good question again, Tim, and I've gone through that $1.5 million, and I've trimmed to the point where, you know, you look at all the niceties and you go, well, realistically, do each room have to have a blood pressure machine? No. And so I've trimmed that already out, and I've trimmed from one point five dollars to $880,000 off the budget. And we are looking at uh, leasing some of the equipment instead of purchasing it. So what was that number then? Uh, Eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars instead of the one and a half. Yeah, which so that's seven hundred thousand almost you're saving. Yeah, we but that's in the budget already. That's in the that's in the current budget that you're seeing in front of you. Oh. Didn't we already authorize five hundred thousand dollars in short term? Yes, you did. Oh, this is another 
eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars on top of that five hundred thousand. You offered you uh, authorized five hundred thousand dollars. You used the five hundred thousand. No. So what we have to do is that five hundred thousand we've already done plus two fifty more. No, because the five hundred thousand dollars included uh, was rolled up into the uh, short the, the this first leg of the interim financing. And so that you gave us the ability to use five hundred thousand dollars of that as a cap, in case we needed to use that for architectural fees. But you didn't. We did not. So it's still sitting there. It's still sitting there, but it's a total of of, of the complete package. It's the short-term financing total package because we have to have the short-term financing to be able to pay all the bills, and so there will be another leg of short-term financing this year for the remainder of the dollars to cover it until we get to a long-term financing with the USDA. You all understand that? No. Good. So we borrowed $5.6 million in the interim financing for the first leg of the finances because we have to understand the, the overall city cap. Of that $5 million that you, that you allowed us to borrow, $500,000 of that we, you gave us access to use because if we ran short with the architectural fee, if there's something that came up, we, you gave us access to use that and we based our revenue as a, as a surety on that. We were able to, we were able to not use that $500,000 and pay off the architectural fee on our own, which is why we're adding that as equity. So it's not, it's not an additional that money is already in the interim financing, and we'll be going through the next phase of interim financing, which will be the rest of the $10.8 million. So <coughs> you borrowed it and put it in the financing, but you didn't use it. We borrowed it and put it in the financing, but did not use it, correct? So it's still sitting there? It is, correct. So it should cover part of this $850,000 that you need? No. Okay. Because it's a to that five hundred thousand dollars is part of the interim financing for the I can't exactly remember the exact amount, but it was right around six million dollars or five point five million dollars. The item before us is permission to have a public hearing. This, uh, this resolution would allow us to have a public hearing on the proposal to enter into one or more of the loan agreements and borrow money for the Hayward Regional. So this would, this would set the public hearing for April the 22nd so that you would be able to, as, as council members, if, if community members wanted to give, give you more feedback, uh, if you need more information from the Hayward Regional Health Care in regards to this project, it would give you opportunities to have that time to do that. Uh, this vote tonight does not set that in, that just sets the public hearing. So there'd be more opportunity for conversation. The other thing that I, that I would like to mention is um, we also are applying for the Red Lake program, which I know is on the next agenda. And what that does is it allows us to, to borrow $300,000 with 0% interest. And so that is not in addition to the seven hundred or $820,000. That's in conjunction with the, with the $820,000 because we'd rather borrow money at 0% interest than money with interest. And so there wouldn't be any more debt on that. And if you don't approve the $820,000, um, uh, we would then be looking at, uh, it still would make more sense to uh, borrow it at 0%. I don't know if the viability of the project will be there if we don't get the $820,000, because that's what the USDA needs to cover, but it just makes a lot of sense to borrow money at 0% interest than four and a half. And plus with that, if I understand, they were, giving, they were gifting a $60,000 gift with that, is correct. that correct? Correct, okay. yes. So agenda number eight would be a resolution 2015 to authorize the public hearing, uh, which would be set at uh, April 22nd. Uh, then again, would give the council members uh, opportunity for 
community input to the council and also give you opportunity to ask questions or further questions or clarifications of the uh, hospital staff I'd make a motion to authorize a public hearing and a motion by Larry is there a second no second seconded by Payne. further questions or clarifications in regard to this resolution well, I just want to say that I'm against the 14 million dollar budget that suddenly you know come up I thought we were going to build a hospital for 11 which I thought was a lot already then but I don't want to stop it from having the public hearing so I just so you know I'm against this project getting this large but I'll still go along with the public hearing At this time, I'll call for a roll call vote. Resolution 2015-11, please. Kurt, aye. Allen, aye. Harvey, aye. Bowder, aye. On a four to zero roll call vote, resolution 2015-11 passes. A public hearing will be set then for Wednesday, April the 22nd. Thank you very much. Thank you for your information this evening. Agenda item number nine. This would be the approval and authorizing the city administrator to sign application for the Red Leg loan in conjunction with the hospital project financing. Uh, that's pretty well in your packet and, and uh, as put together by Mr. Pullman in his in conversations with us earlier. Is there a motion for that approval? So moved. Moved by Tim. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Payne. My question in regards to finances, Mr. Pritchard. <laughs> you may <Yeah>. ask. May <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make uh, make sure everybody understands. Uh, you know, first of all, what Red Leg is. It's a. It's called. It stands for Real Economic Development Loan and Grant, and it's a revolving loan program that the money will go back to Northwest REC as it's repaid, uh, assuming it's repaid, and and the uh, and the th the three hundred thousand. Because you, um, because you have to approve at the city level all um, borrowing, uh, they had asked me to sign these, uh, these applications, and I said I would not do that until it came before you guys to approve that and authorize that. But um, just, keep, just understand that even, even if you pass this, they cannot exceed what you've already authorized. So right now that amount is 10833000 or whatever that number is. Um, they cannot exceed that even with this 300,000 so no matter if, if you approve this unless you authorize additional borrowing they cannot exceed that amount of money if you two weeks from now decide to increase that then they cannot exceed that amount of money so the red leg cannot be additional debt it's going to have to replace, replace existing debt that they will have or already have because they cannot exceed what you authorize them to borrow so uh, even with that 300,000 so it does probably make sense um, if the uh, you know to go ahead and borrow at a three hundred thousand dollars zero percent level uh, uh, because you're not authorizing any additional monies, uh, you've all, you already authorized the maximum amount that they can borrow, and and this number would be inclusive in that. So uh, I think it it probably makes sense. So uh, but if it's to a do six that. year note, they obviously have to pay that off. First. It's a six year note. Yeah. It's a um, fairly quick repayment, but at zero percent interest, it, it probably makes it, it does make sense. There's no doubt. So, thank you for that clarification. Do we need a roll call vote for that, Mr. Pickner, or a voice vote sufficient? I would suggest you do a roll call. On that. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote then in regards to <laughs> approval and authorizing the city administrator to sign the red leg loan. Allen. Hi. Harvey? Yep. Bowder? Aye. Kurth? Aye. On a four to zero roll call vote, that approval passes. So agenda number 10, uh, request from the Paradise Bar. I entertain a motion to table that, please. So moved. moved. By Tim, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Larry. All in favor of tabling the request from Paradise Bar, say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
That will be tabled until they get their paperwork completed. Just a reminder, we thank the uh, government class for being with us this evening. Uh, they wish to take a picture afterwards. We'll do that when we close. Our next regular meeting will be April the 22nd. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Monty. Is there a second? Seconded by Larry. All in favor of adjournment say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hayward City Council is now adjourned. Thank you so much.